Praise the Lord, everyone. My name is Mario. I am an Apostolic Pentecostal. If you're visiting my channel for the first time, welcome. I've needed you. As a matter of fact, you're the reason why I'm making this video because you probably navigated your way to my channel because A, you got referred to by someone or B, you typed in the right keywords that I put into all my videos that led you to this video. Now, as you know, I've started a brand new series where I'm going to be doing an apostolic reaction video on watching other denominations sermons. And the only reason why I'm doing it is I just want to see, hey, are they telling the full truth, a watered down truth, or are they saying no truth at all? Okay, I think we can all agree that we all just want to find truth. And there can only be one truth. There can't be two truths that exist that conflict with one another. There can only be one truth. So if you haven't checked out my very first video, make sure you hit the I card above where I commented on Francis Chan's simple truth about water baptism. Now I wanted to kind of continue the theme on baptism okay if you know anything about being apostolic pentecostal we're very passionate about acts 238 which talks about repenting of your sins being baptized in jesus name and receiving the gift of the holy ghost so what i did i went on youtube and just simply typed the keyword baptism i wanted to see what videos would show up what are the top 10 results and I found this one. I watched about 10, 15 seconds of it, so I have not seen this at all. This is my very first time watching it. So with no further ado, enough of me talking, why don't we play that cool, cool intro? Get it! What is baptism? Let's play it. What is baptism? If something is really worth doing, it is worth doing with your whole life. And in many respects, baptism is saying something with your whole heart. It's saying that I am trusting and I am following Jesus and I am doing it with my whole heart. Baptism is, is when that person says, I trust and I follow Jesus Christ. And I want to demonstrate, I want to show that to the rest of the world. So it's an outward sign of what's gone on inside the person. All right, I see this theme commonly used, uh, especially in Baptist churches. We're saying it's an outward sign. It's a profession of faith of what's gone uh, inside your heart. And I see where they're getting it from. They get it from 2 Corinthians 5, 17, which says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Yes, they did die in their old ways because according to Acts 2.38, if you get baptized in Jesus' name, it's for the remission of sins. You're dying away from your old sins, the sins you committed, the sins you're going to commit, and you die away from it. And yes, you do become a new creature. The point I'm getting from the very first 30 seconds of this video that it's just simply for an outward profession of faith rather than a commandment, uh, which Jesus made it to be. Uh, the reason we baptize as adults is because there needs to be belief there. And baptism is an outward sign, again, of that inward belief. And if the belief isn't there, then the baptism doesn't mean anything. But the moment there is... That's a great point that he says there, is that, yes, you should baptize uh, when you understand why you're doing it. All right? The reason why the Apostolic Church doesn't baptize babies is babies have no reason. Okay, they simply cry and they poop and they scream and they yell and they need the parents. I mean, they're completely dependent upon the parents. They can't even get up and walk, okay? So, reason why we don't baptize babies is first of all, there's nowhere in the Bible where babies were baptized, okay? But they haven't reached a, a maturity level in their brain that tells them that this is why I am doing it. Okay? Otherwise, it would be the parents making the decision for them. And we know in order to get to Christ, to search for Him, it's going to be a personal relationship with Him. So we've got to come up with the reasoning ourselves. So yes, I do agree that uh, maybe not quite adults. I mean, I know smart 10, 11, 12 year olds that know why they're getting baptized. It's for the forgiveness of all their sins. And they have made that decision on their own, not influenced by the church, not influenced by the pastor, not pressured by their parents, 
but simply they have come to the decision that they do need to get baptized and they see the reason and the need for it. It's belief there. It means absolutely everything. When somebody gets baptized, it's a declaration. They're doing it to declare to everyone else what's taken place inside them. It's also a kind of dedication. It's saying, I'm dedicating the way I am and the life I live to God. And it's also a kind of devotion. It's motivated not by, oh, I want to impress everybody else. It's motivated by... Man, I really wish I could hear how they're baptizing. Uh, there's a common misconception um, in a lot of churches that haven't really have gone away from truth that they believe they should repeat exactly what is said in Matthew 28 19 which says baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost and a lot of churches repeat this exact same phrase but there's no power in the name of the Father there's no power in the name of the Son there's no power in the name of the Holy Ghost actually repeating those words there's no power in it there's only power in the actual name behind the Father. There's power in the name behind the Son, and there's power in the name behind the Holy Ghost, which we know to be Jesus. That's why the very first baptisms happened in the name of Jesus, and every baptism in the Bible through the book of Acts happened in the name of Jesus. But one thing I do like, they are baptizing uh, fully immersed in water. So yes, that that's right, but I really, it's really hard to comment on it if I can't hear how they're baptizing. The person's love for God. Because of your faith in Jesus Christ, we baptize you now in the name of the Father, oh. and the Son. No. Oh. <laughs> oh, after just saying all that. Okay, let's get this straight. Matthew 28, 19. Let's understand why Jesus said this. This is called the Great Commission, okay? We find in Matthew 28, 16, Jesus went with the 11 disciples and commanded and ordained them and appointed them to go out to do these commandments, okay? So right there, okay, that should be enough proof to the church, all right, in his word, that if Jesus said to go do it, do it. And he told them very specifically, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. How much more clear can it be? If Jesus, we believe the Son of God, God manifested in flesh, said it, why in the world would you deny and say you don't have to do it? But let's not stop there. Let's understand the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Ghost. Now, I'm not gonna explain it in this video. If you wanna know the name of the Father, the name of the Son, name of the Holy Ghost, make sure you hit the I card up there and I've got a video explaining all of that. But it pains me to watch this because there's no power, all right? The water represents nothing in this moment. Um, because they're not baptizing in the name of Jesus according to Acts 2.38. I wanted to get baptized because I thought it would bring me close to God, and it has. Um, I can feel within me that it has brought me close to God. And I wanted to make a public declaration of my faith and um, take the next step in my relationship with God. If you wanted to make a public declaration of your faith, just obey the word. That's simple. You don't have to be baptized in water to declare to the world that you are all changed. You can do that in, in your room by yourself. All right. The, the church doesn't have to see it. No one has to see that. All you have to do is just obey the word. And if you want to truly obey the word, get baptized in Jesus name, according to Acts 238, Acts 238, Acts 238. And I will repeat it again and again on this channel that Acts 238 is the plan of salvation. It's the things you need to do to get into heaven. So let me repeat again. Acts 2.38 says, Then Peter said unto them, Again, Peter was part of the 11 disciples who went on a mountain in Matthew 28.16, who was appointed by God, who understood what God was saying when he said, Go ye therefore into the nation, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. He understood it. He didn't make a mistake. 
and notice what name he used in the very first baptism. Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And how many people got baptized that day? Well, I'm glad you asked. Acts 2.41 says, Then they gladly received his word, were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Holy guacamole, that's a lot of people who realized, hey, I need to get baptized in Jesus' name. It's simple as that. One after baptism, okay. After baptism, really, you're starting your journey with, with trusting Jesus, with baptism. And you've got to continue. You need to read your Bible, you need to pray, you need to find out what this God who has made and created us, what he wants from us. You know, how do we continue that relationship? Beautiful. He, he, now, I do like where he's going with this, okay? So after baptism, in Jesus' name, not the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, yes, that's when your journey actually does start. Your journey doesn't end there. You haven't arrived anywhere once you get baptized in Jesus' name. Yes, all your sins have been forgiven. Yes, you've passed the step of salvation, but there's a much more important part called sanctification. If you don't know what that is, click the I card above. I explain all that of how it's the process of removing sin and becoming the image uh, of Christ. But hey, I think I've seen enough of this video. There's only about 40 seconds. I can't imagine anything uh, more after this, but I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have a suggestion, comment down below of a video I should review again of another denomination i don't want to review any apostolic videos because i already know they're teaching the truth i want to review other denominations okay so all my baptist methodist friends presbyterian friends non-denominational friends uh, evangelical friends all you you watch this video get with it comment down below i ain't scared I'm operating in spirit and in truth, and I am willing to defend the Bible for what it is and not be fooled by any of these false doctrines out there. So, thank you all for watching. My name is Brother Mario. God bless you. Hey, I hope you all enjoyed that. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. Definitely wanna know what you all got out of it. But most importantly, share this message. Share it with your best friend. Put it on your Facebook, slap it on your Instagram. Doesn't even matter. We're trying to get this message out. And hey, don't let your blessing streak in. Check out some of these other videos we got here. Hey, love you all so much. Gotta go, bye-bye.